Lord, we come before you, and we ask that you would proclaim your gospel to your people. And we ask this in your name, amen. amen. You may be seated. I can't, I can't really preach this sermon with all this stuff. <laughs> Oh, that feels good. <laughs> All right, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 23. We're going to make this a tradition. <laughs> Matthew 23, uh, verses 1 through 12. And in this section, what you're going to find is Jesus, it says right before the seven woes to the Pharisees and the religious leaders. And um, before that, you're going to find an introduction to it where Jesus is kind of telling you kind of what these seven woes are going to entail. And, um, and so it's a very interesting section to look at because it's challenging, not just for the Pharisees. I think it's challenging for the 21st century church. Um, and so I wanted to look at what this introduction is, but... There's three things in here that Jesus is really attacking the religious leaders on. And I thought, you know, I could spend like five minutes on each of them, or I could just delve into one of them and have some fun. But I do want you to know the three things, but I've chosen to just focus on one of them. So the first thing that you find in here is that Jesus is going to say, um, of the religious leaders that they preach, but they don't practice. And you and I are familiar with this concept. This is the hypocrisy of the religious leaders. They are preaching to the people, but they're not doing what they're saying. And, um, you know, it was a big problem for them. It's probably still a big problem in the church. Let me change that. It definitely is a big problem still in the church. Um, but when I looked at it, I thought, you know, I don't particularly want to preach on that. But that is the first thing. The second thing um, is really interesting. And this is where Jesus goes on and he says that they tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and they lay them on the people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. So the idea is, is that the religious leaders, their job, is to interpret the law and then to pass the law down to the people and then to enforce the law. That's their job. And so in part of doing that, what they've done is they've added to the law. They've added different parts to the law, making the law more of a burden than anything. And then they've passed it down to the people, but they've enforced it without any grace and any mercy. And they themselves are not following this law, but that's what they've done. And so Jesus is attacking the religious leaders on this second point, which is a really interesting point. But the third point really caught my attention. So the third point that he says immediately after that is, um, for they do their deeds to be seen by others. And then after that, he's going to give three examples of this, which are really fascinating examples, particularly when you take those examples and you move them into the 21st century. Um, so he's going to give three examples of them doing their deeds to be seen by others. And the first example that he gives is this. All of this. All their garments. And I'll read it to you. Um, he says um, that they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. And all this is, is this is liturgical garb or religious leader garb that they wear that communicates to everybody, I'm really important, that I matter, that I am significant. And so maybe you hear like, what in the world is a phylactery? Um, well, they were little like leather boxes and they contained the scrolls in there. 
and they would have them wrapped on their arm or on their forehead. Can you imagine that? Try having a conversation with somebody and not notice the giant box strapped to their forehead. But what they would do is they would make the box bigger and bigger and bigger just in case you missed it. Um, and then they so they strapped to their arms, strapped them to their forehead. There are pictures of people. Uh, you can look it up online with boxes strapped to their, to their heads. Fascinating. Um, and so, but you, you've got this whole idea of what they were doing is making their garments declare how important they were and they loved it. They loved that people would notice their garments because then they would notice their power and their importance and their influence and that mattered to them immensely. Um, and so, so Jesus is pushing back against this whole idea. The second thing that Jesus begins to uh, give an example of is... Um, I keep reading the wrong one. Um, that, they, that they love the place of honor at feast and the best seats in the, in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by everyone. They love when they go out and people notice them and refer to them by their titles of rabbi and all of the, the um, great... Um, honors that they bestow upon them by bringing them into their places and giving them the best seats and making sure that they're comfortable and everything's taking place for them. They love it. They love all the trappings that go along with being a religious leader. And Jesus is pushing back on all of this and saying, your garments, your influence, your power, your wonderful seats, your titles that you have, which is the next thing that Jesus is going to talk about. And he's going to go on and on about titles. Let me, let me read that to you. He says but, um, that they love that they're called rabbi by others, but you are not to, call, but you are not, um, to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers, and no man can call you father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have one instructor, which is Christ. On and on about these titles. You know how many titles we have in the Episcopal Church? You know how many different titles that people have? You got, you got reverend, you got the most reverend, you got the very reverend. You got so many different reverends because we love these titles. Part of this is all the trappings of what it means to be in the life of the church, but it's not just that. It's it's all of this. All of the, the candles and the crosses and the, the table and all the stuff. And I'm not saying any of it is bad. And Jesus isn't saying any of it is bad either. But he certainly has an argument against it. And his argument against the religious leaders is, you've lost me. You've lost me in the midst of all this stuff. You focused on your titles. You focused on your clothing. You focused on all the pretty things around you. You focused on all this stuff. And in the midst of all of it, you lost me. You lost the most important thing. And part of this is, you know, it's pretty easy for us to attack the Pharisees and the religious leaders. We love doing that. But you can take this and you can move it into the 21st century. And then it becomes very personal, and very difficult. Because... You know, I wear these every Sunday. I wear these vestments. We get these magazines. The, th these magazines are full of church things that you can buy. And they're all like thousands and thousands of dollars. You can't tell me that you care about the poor when you're investing in this stuff. And this is the whole point of what Jesus is doing against the religious leaders. Because where is Jesus? He's hanging out with the poor. He's hanging out with the people that have been pushed to the edges of society. He's not hanging out with them. Instead, he's pushing back against all the things that he's doing because he's saying, you're so invested in this that you've lost sight of the people around you. You've lost sight of people that actually need lifted up. You lost sight of God himself. 
We lost sight of the Christ come into the world because we're so enamored by all the stuff around us. And the same thing applies in the 21st century. It's very easy to get wrapped up into all of this stuff. I just went on a clergy retreat. It's a clergy, what's the last word? Retreat, thank you. You should send an email to some of the clergy and remind them that it's a clergy retreat. They're in full vestments for the entire weekend. They're not celebrating. They're not preaching. They're not teaching. Why? You get so wrapped up in these things. Your identity becomes this. Your identity becomes this. Rather than our identity being in Christ. And none of this is bad stuff. Again, but when it takes the place of Jesus, when it begins to be the focus, when we walk out of church and we say, well, they lit the candles in the wrong order, (laughs) then we've lost sight of Jesus. When we walk out of church and we say, well, I don't like what the priest is wearing, we've lost sight of Jesus. Because what we do and what we gather here for is the proclamation and the elevation of Jesus. And all of this stuff can aid us in doing that, but it can't be the focus. And the Pharisees and the religious leaders fell into it being the focus. And the reason that Jesus brings it up, he's not talking to the religious leaders. He's not talking to the Pharisees. He's teaching his disciples. Because Jesus knows that it is so easy to fall for the trappings of the church and to miss out on Jesus. It's so easy to be enamored by the place that we're worshiping or the things that we have or the garments that the priest wears or what do we call this guy, reverend, father, whatever. They'd be so wrapped up in that that we miss Jesus. And so Jesus is reminding his disciples, the Pharisees have gone off the rails, and here's where. Don't follow them. And the same reminder I give to you. Please pray with me. Lord, we come before you. We thank you that you have made this your dwelling place. And although you've given us amazing things to aid us in worship, Help to guard our hearts so that they never become the thing that we're worshiping. But that that is always you. And we ask this in your name. Amen.